بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله uh, Last time we've reached to the uh, belief and we defined belief and today we will uh, inshallah start speaking about the first article or pillar of belief which is believing in Allah Azza wa Believing in Allah Azza wa is the most essential of all pillars or articles of faith. Uh, and it is the foundation for believing in, in all others. Because without believing in Allah Azza wa you simply will not believe in anything else. Now included in belief in Allah Azza wa is to believe that Allah Azza wa exists. Whoever denies the existence of Allah Azza wa is a disbeliever. Whoever doubts or has reluctance about the issue of the existence of Allah Azza wa Jal is a disbeliever because uh, assertion and firmness in re- with regards to belief in the existence of Allah Azza wa Jal is a condition for the soundness of one's faith. Included in... in uh, Belief in Allah Azza wa Jal is to believe in the following, his lordship, his divinity, his names, and his attributes. His lordship, Allah Azza wa Jal, we must believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is Rabbul Alameen, the lord of the worlds. Now, the words in English don't really do justice to the meaning of the uh, actual Arabic words. In Arabic, the word Rabb, which is translated usually to, into the English word Lord, it, it means much more than just uh, a Lord. It, it means a Lord and a Master. It means a sustainer, a supporter, a, a nourisher, a, a guardian. It also uh, means a ruler, the one who's in control uh, of all effects, uh, the one who is uh, directing, uh, governing, uh, the sovereign, all of these meanings are included in the word uh, Rabb. And the worlds, it, it simply means anything that exists other than Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal is in control, is the governor, is the guardian, is the sustainer, the provider of all other than himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, including Angels, humans, uh, jinn, fish, birds, the animals, everything. Allah Azza wa Jal, included in believing in His Lordship, is that we believe in uh, that He has absolute dominion. He deserves absolute praise and gratitude, and that everything returns to Him. Ultimately, everything. In this life, with regards to control and and running the affairs of this life, is back to him, is up to him, and matters in the hereafter will also eventually turn to return to him. He is one in all his actions. He has no partner. He is one in his creation. He is one in providing. He is one in giving life, in causing death, in running uh, and governing the affairs of this universe in controlling the universe, uh, and all similar matters that are related to the, the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Whoever doubts the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, Rububiyyatullahi Azza wa Jal, is a disbeliever. Whoever associates someone with Allah as a partner in any of his uh, actions of Lordship, is also a disbeliever. So whoever claims that a saint or a pious person can control the affairs, has, can govern the, the, the universe and can make things happen and prevent things from happening, has associated a partner to Allah Azza wa Jal in this aspect and thus he is a disbeliever. Because he did not fulfill the definition of believing in the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal, part of which is not, not associating anything to him in these actions subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also included 
as we said, the second was believing in the divinity of Allah Azza wa Now, the implication of this is to single out Allah Azza wa Jal in all inward and outward uh, acts of worship, including inward love to Allah, fear of Allah, reliance on Allah, hope in Allah, outward uh, supplicating Allah, pleading for help, slaughtering, vowing, praying. Anyone who uh, directs any of these acts of worship to other than Allah Azza wa Jal has actually uh, left the fold of Islam. Because Allah Azza wa Jal alone is the deserving of all these uh, acts of worship. Uh, so we spoke about the existence of Allah. We spoke about the Lordship of Allah Azza wa Jal. And we spoke about the divinity of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, the, the last portion or part related to uh, the implications or parts of believing in Allah Azza wa Jal is believing in the names of Allah and His attributes. Allah Azza wa Jal possesses the most perfect qualities and attributes. He has the most beautiful names, subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, Allah Azza wa Jal does not resemble His creation in any manner. As He says, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is none like unto Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we affirm to Allah Azza wa Jal that which He and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, affirmed to Him with regards to qualities and names. However, there are uh, boundaries to this. Ibn Taymiyyah, may Allah have mercy on him, said, we believe in all of these without distortion, without negation, without describing how, and without resemblance. Meaning, we believe in Allah Azza wa Jal without distorting the meaning of the word uh, or uh, the, the attribute or the name. Changing it from its known correct meaning in the language, in the Arabic language, without having any evidence substantiating this change of meaning. For example, someone says, when Allah Azza wa Jal describes himself as becoming angry, uh, well, they say, well, Allah Azza wa Jal does not get angry, but Allah Azza wa Jal in this way, he is just threatening to punish. When Allah Azza wa Jal says Allah Azza wa Jal rises above his throne, he doesn't really mean that he is actually rising or he has risen, but it actually means he has control over his throne. This is a deviation with regards to the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. The meanings of the names and attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal linguistically are known. The difference between what these people say and what the correct belief is, is to say that Allah Azza wa Jal has such qualities and attributes, but in a way that does, <coughs> excuse me, but in a way that does not resemble any of his creations, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> this applies to all the attributes of Allah. So we say Allah Azza wa Jal rises above His throne. We say that Allah Azza wa Jal becomes angry, but in a way that befits His greatness and majesty. And this is the sound and correct faith and creed. Now, negation. Negation or negating the, the names or attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal. Denying these names and attributes of Allah Azza wa entails something that is illogical. You can't say Allah Azza wa exists, but He doesn't have any description. He doesn't have any, we don't know anything about Him. Again, saying that is belying Allah Azza wa because Allah in the Quran describes Himself, himself in many verses to have different qualities and attributes. The 
uh, the third thing, the third no uh, of Ibn Taymiyyah is that you can't think or you can't believe that the qualities of Allah Azza wa can be perceived or imagined by your, your mind. Meaning, you can say Allah Azza wa Jal ascends or descends in such and such manner. We say Allah Azza wa Jal rises above his throne and he then descends to the heavens in the last third of the night as in the, the narration. But this happens in a way that befits his majesty and his greatness. So we don't deny the, the attribute itself, but we refuse describing the how of the attribute. The last one is, the last no of the four, is uh, affirming exact likeness of Allah Azza wa Jal with something or someone of of his creation because Allah Azza wa Jal again says Laysa kamithlihi shay. there is none like unto him subhanahu wa ta'ala Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullah alayhi may Allah have mercy on him said whoever denies any of the qualities which Allah Azza wa Jal uh, described himself with in the Quran becomes a disbeliever because he uh, belies the Quran as we just said Allah Azza wa Jal describes himself in different verses of having different qualities. So when you, when you say Allah Azza wa Jal does not have this, you're saying that Allah Azza wa Jal is not saying the truth in the Quran. Now, uh, included in believing in Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, the main title is the first article or pillar of belief in Allah Azza wa Jal. Included in that is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is all-knowing. His knowledge encompasses everything. He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, knows everything, including treacherous looks of the eyes, including what the hearts can see, including what the soul whispers, as Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ Indeed, we have created man, and we know what his soul whispers to him. To him. So Allah Azza wa Jal is all-knowing. Also, Allah Azza wa Jal is all-capable. When Allah Azza wa Jal wills a matter, as he says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا أَمْرُهُ إِذَا أَرَادَ شَيْئًا أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ His command when he wants something, when he wills something, is to say, be. And it is. It is as simple as that for Allah Azza wa Jal. Because he is all-capable. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the, uh, from the time of Adam, may Allah exalt his mention, until now, billions and billions and trillions and you can say any, any uh, number of creations from Allah Azza wa Jal. He's created jinn, humans, animals, birds, insects, fish, trees, galaxies. All of that is Created by Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahi, when you think, when you start reflecting on this universe and what it has, when you start looking at the size of the earth compared to the moon, compared to the sun, and then when you start thinking about the galaxy we're, which we're a part of, and then you th start thinking of the trillions of galaxies that exist, and you start thinking of how capable of is Allah Azza wa yani, This really reflects an, an, an amazing ability of creation and uh, control. SubhanAllah. We also believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is all hearing. He hears everything. Allah Azza wa Jal hears uh, the secretive or concealed words just like he, he can hear the allowed uh, words that are spoken, uh, that are said aloud. Uh, words that are said aloud and spoken 
uh, without concealing. Allah say, says, أَمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّا لَا نَسْمَعُ سِرَّهُمْ وَنَجْوَاهُمْ Or do they think or believe that we do not hear their secrets and private talks? Indeed we do. Bala, meaning indeed we do. Allah Azza wa Jal, also in, uh, part of the belief, is to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is all-seeing. Just imagine this, brothers and sisters, a small ant, black ant, crawling on a black rock. It's black and the rock is black and it's pitch dark at night. Allah Azza wa Jal, this is just to make the picture clearer. Allah Azza wa Jal sees the crawling of this ant on this rock during that dark time of the night. Alongside seeing everything else in the universe. But it is as small as that and as huge as anything else you can think of. Uh, included in that is to believe in what he described himself or said about himself in one of the most beautiful chapters of the Quran. The su one of the most beautiful surahs of the Quran. Surah 112, which is قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ الْإِخْلَاسِ Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ Say, He is Allah who is one. قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Allah الصَّمَدْ Allah is the eternal refuge. لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ he neither begets nor was he born. وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ And nor is there to him any equivalent. Allah Azza wa Jal is one. He is alone. He has no partner. He is indivisible. Allah Azza wa Jal is permanent and has permanent unity. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is distinct in all of his attributes, all of his actions, all of his qualities, all of his words, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the eternal refuge. As-Samad, the word As-Samad, does not only mean the eternal refuge. It describes Allah Azza wa Jal as being the one upon whom all existence depend. And in need of. And he is at the same time not in need of anything or anyone. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, worshipping a God with these qualities makes you uh, or puts your mind to ease and your heart to ease. When you think of the greatness Of, of Allah Azza wa Jal, it just, subhanAllah, it just makes you say, Alhamdulillah, that I am a slave of Allah and not of anything else. When you look around you in the world and you see people worshiping different things other than Allah, you say, Alhamdulillah, I am lucky that Allah Azza wa Jal selected me and made me worship Him alone. Alone. You know, we could have we could have been anything. We could have been worshiping just absolutely anything. And I can start listing that which things that are being worshipped besides Allah Azza wa but it's an endless list. And that's why I say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah that I am when I want something. I just raise my hands and I have a direct connection with my creator. I ask of him and he responds. When I am grieved, when I have such a creator that I worship with all of these qualities we mentioned, when I'm grieved, when I'm saddened, when I'm anxious, when I'm tested, when I'm tried, 
All I do is just go down into prostration, sujood, and call upon him. And he responds. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ When my slaves ask you, O Muhammad, about me, I am near and respond to the call of those who call upon me. And, and this feeling that you're calling upon your Lord and He's near, he hears you, he sees you, and he is all capable of fulfilling your needs. <sighs> what a beautiful feeling. Subhanallah. When, when someone believes in Allah Azza wa firmly and strongly, he uh, harvests a lot of fruits as a result of his faith. In this life and in the hereafter. Uh, one of which is that Allah Azza wa Jal guides. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Allah will guide those who believe to the straight path. The people who believe are the worthiest of the guidance or receiving guidance from Allah Azza wa to his straight path, the path and the only path that leads to him, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the greatest fruits that a believer can harvest as a result of any of his acts of worship. Uh, he will not be, uh, he will not enter hellfire. In the book of uh, Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Mu'adh ibn Jabal said, once uh, I was riding behind the Prophet وسلم, or rather Anas was describing. Anas said, whilst Mu'adh was riding behind the Prophet وسلم, meaning on an animal, the Prophet وسلم, called upon, upon him and said, O Mu'adh, and Mu'adh immediately said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, I am at your back and service. And then the Prophet ﷺ repeated that another time, said, O Mu'adh, and again, Mu'adh said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, I am at your back and service. A third time he called upon him وسلم, and Mu'adh said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, I am at your back and service. Then he said to him وسلم, at that, any slave, who testifies that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger, as is the slave and messenger of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal will make it forbidden for him to enter the fire of hell. Testifying that none is worthy of worship but Allah. And this testimony includes the this, the previously described uh, branches, his divinity, his lordship, and his names and his qualities. Another thing is that it, may, it makes the person deserving of being admitted into Jannah. Uh, Imam Muslim reports uh, on the authority of uh, Uthman radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever dies knowing that there is none worthy of worship but Allah will be admitted, admitted into Jannah. You know, with the temptations and the trials of this life, you feel that you're standing in the middle of a tornado with regards to your faith. You want to hold on. You want to, become, you, to remain firm and steadfast on your faith. But the challenge is strong. The power of the wave is overwhelming. But then you think, I have a Lord to protect me. 
If we are true believers, then we become deserving of the support of Allah Azza wa Jal to make us firm, continue to be firm on our faith until we meet Him, until we depart this life and we meet Him. Allah Azza wa Jal says, يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Allah keeps firm those who believe with firm words, meaning the testimony of faith, in this worldly life and in the hereafter. And part of the hereafter is remaining firm when you're questioned in the grave. Leading a blissful life. Allah Azza wa Jal says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجِزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Whoever performs righteous deeds, male or female, whilst he believes or whilst believing, then we will make him lead a blissful life. This is here. We will make him lead a blissful life. And then we will give him the best of reward. That's in the hereafter. So in this life, your life is blissful. You live in a joyful life. And when it comes to the hereafter, you enjoy the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. Now, we uh, perform many deeds with the hope of receiving the mercy of Allah Azza wa and His reward. Believing is one of the ways leading to the mercy of Allah Azza wa Allah Azza wa says, وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر ويقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة ويطيعون الله ورسوله أولئك سيرحمهم الله. The believing men and the believing women are allies, supporters of one another. They enjoy good and forbid that which is evil. They establish the prayer, pay zakah, the alms, and obey Allah and His Messenger. Those are the ones. Who will, uh, with whom Allah Azza wa Jal will be merciful. Do, those are the ones who will become deserving or be deserving of the mercy of Allah the Almighty. Uh, part of human nature is that we like people to like us and love us and look up to us. Belief gives you that. Allah Azza wa Jal uh, says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجَعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَانُ وُدَّا Those who believe and act righteously, the most merciful will bless them with genuine love in the hearts of others. People will love you because of your faith. Allah Azza wa Jal, as in, uh, in a different narration, Allah Azza wa Jal, when he loves a person, he or she, he calls upon Jibreel and say, Oh Jibreel, I love so and so, so love him. So Jibreel loves him and then Jibreel calls upon the angels in the heavens and say, Allah Azza wa Jal loves so and so. Can you imagine brothers and sisters? Can you imagine your name is being dealt with and circulating way above there in the heavens? SubhanAllah. So Jibreel says, Allah loves so and so, so love him. So the angels love him. And then love is sent down. His love amongst people is sent down to earth. I'll give you an example. Have you not met a person? Or has this not happened to you before? It personally happened to me a lot. You meet a person for the first time in your life. You feel so comfortable dealing with him and talking to him. And you want to become 
closer and you take his number. Brother, can I take your number? Can we get together? Can we? Subhanallah. You haven't met him before. Or you haven't met her before, the sisters. But you feel so comfortable. You feel like you like that person. Lovable. Well, it is because Allah Azza wa Jal sent that love from above there to earth. Genuine love in the hearts of other believers. From the fruits, from the fruits is that a person becomes deserving of the intercession of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hereafter. In in the book of Al Imam Al Bukhari, on the authority of Abu Hurairah, he said, "I asked the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is the luckiest people with your intercession, or will, who will gain your intercession uh, in the hereafter, on the day of resurrection?" He said, "Whoever." testifies that none is worthy of worship, meaning believing in Allah. Whoever testifies that none is worthy of worship, but Allah sincerely from his heart. He is going to be the luckiest with the intercession or gaining the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We all strive to get uh, provision, to make money, to, to earn our livelihood. Allah Azza wa Jal made this a result of belief. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ If the people of the cities had believed and feared Allah, were conscious of Allah, we would have bestowed upon them blessings from the heavens and the earth. You gain from the heavens and the earth. Whatever Allah sends down to you, and whatever Allah brings from the earth to you, all provisions, all sustenance. You know, Allah says in the Quran, وَفِي السَّمَاءِ رِزْقُكُمْ وَمَا تُوْحَدُونَ It is in your heaven, in the heavens, where your provision lies. And that which you, you were promised. So, when things get tough, Life becomes tight. You know where to go. You know who to ask. And you know who to whom you should resort to make a way out for you and provide you. The impacts of faith. Now, when someone believes, this should, and it does, have an impact, a direct impact on his practical Life and his behavior with others and with himself as well. Being watchful of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is one of the greatest uh, impacts on the person's behavior or personality or conduct. Is that he becomes watchful of Allah Azza wa Jal. So he would not say except that which pleases Allah. He would not like to be seen except doing something that pleases Allah Azza wa Jal. He would not walk to a place except to places that Allah loves. He would not use his hands. He would not utilize any of the things that Allah blessed him with, except in, in a manner or in matters that please Allah Azza wa he becomes keen on submitting himself to the legislation and the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا كَانَ, إنما كان قَوْلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذَا دُعُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ لِيَحْكُمَ بَيْنَهُمْ أَنْ يَقُولُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا The only response of true believers, when they are called to Allah and His Messenger, to judge between them, is to say, we hear, and we obey. No arguments. When it comes to a command from Allah and His Messenger, then don't ask questions, just obey, just fulfill. If it's a command to do, then do it. If it's a command to refrain, then stay away. One of my shiyukh said once to me, I was asking him about a matter in the Sunnah. 
he said something very beautiful. He said, Hazim, imagine the Prophet وسلم, standing in front of you. And he says, Hazim, do this. Will you ask him, O oh Messenger of Allah, is this only recommended or is this mandatory? I said, by Allah, no, I will not. I will do it. He said, this is how you need to deal when it comes to the commands of Allah and the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. Adhere, submit, full submission to the commands of Allah Wasallam. When you are a true believer, when faith, belief in Allah Azza wa Jal has actually found its way to the root of your heart, deep in your heart, then you will certainly deal with people according to what Allah Azza wa Jal wants from you as a believer. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari, None of you will truly believe until he loves for his brother or sister for that matter, his fellow Muslim. That which he loves for himself, then it becomes much easier for your heart and your soul to give things up for other Muslims. To favor them on you, over yourself because Allah Azza wa says a true believer does that. Only a true believer does that. Relying on Allah Azza wa Jal during difficult times. We all had problems. We all faced tests, went through adversities, hardships. And the only soothing thing to the heart is Allah this is uh, the one who doesn't feel that he is gifted that he is enslaved to Allah Azza wa Jal is really deprived <laughs> when you're in difficulty human nature says that you want to resort to someone who has the power, who has the, the ability, who has the care and love, compassion towards you to help you out, to extend the hand of help. When you have this reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal, see when you believe in Allah and you know His, His power, when you know his attributes, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, the more you learn about Allah Azza wa Jal, the more you love Allah Azza wa Jal. And the more you become certain that it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can help you during difficult times. Because he's the only one with ultimate, absolute our capability, ability. He's the only one who can change things. I'm sure all of you brothers and sisters went through uh, times of difficulty and you felt that it is only Allah Azza wa Jal when it was gone, when it was done. You, you felt that it, it was only Allah Azza wa Jal who took you away from this difficult situation. When you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, when you know His capability, His power, you will not say this is impossible because there is no such thing when it comes to Allah. There is no impossible with Allah. Everything is possible. And the final impact is that during these times, of difficulty, you raise your hands to Allah. You go in sujood. 
put your forehead down, humble yourself, humiliate yourself to your Creator, and ask Him all your needs. One of the shiuch once said, please, when you go down in sujood, don't raise your head without having asked Allah for everything that you want. When you uh, call upon Allah you know that you're resorting to someone who can, who has, who cares, and who will. When the Prophet ﷺ was supplicating Allah جل, resorted to him, implored upon him during the battle of Badr, the first battle he fought والسلام, which was not intended to be a battle actually. But Allah جل, decreed that they have to be tested, the believers have to be tested. He raised his hand and raised his hand and, and called upon Allah until Abu Bakr pitied him. He said, O Messenger of Allah, enough. By Allah, Allah will not forsake you. When Musa السلام, was chased by Fir'aun, Pharaoh and his army, the army that they could not see the end of. And when they reached the sea, it is with human scales impossible to be rescued now. It's total destruction. Every single soul will be killed. But that's not when Allah is on your side. When you have Allah, you have everything. And if you lose Allah, you lost everything. Allah Azza wa commanded Moses to strike with his stick. And this huge Red Sea opened 12 paths for him. The water was described as mountains, as high as it was. And then the, the soil of the, of the sea was as dry as it had never had water, was never touched with water before. How did this happen? Because he had Allah on his side. And then the rest of the story is known to all of us. They entered and then they escaped. As soon as they left, Allah Azza wa Jal made the water collapse to its original position and they all drowned. Who would have thought from the followers of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam that this will happen the way it happened? None of them, I'm sure. Because Allah described their state فَلَمَّا تَرَاءَ الْجَمْعَانِ قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ When the two armies could see each other, خلاص, the, the army of Pharaoh came, they were so close. The followers of Musa, قَالَ أَصْحَابُ مُوسَىٰ إِنَّا لَمُدْرَكُونَ The followers of Musa said, we're destroyed. Immediately, without reluctance, without hesitation, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said, no, indeed, I have Allah. So when you have Allah azza wa when you believe in Allah azza wa because if you don't believe in Allah azza wa you're not deserving of the support. You can call upon him anytime you want. And for as long as you want, if you don't believe in him, in his lordship, divinity, and his names and his attributes, then at that time, what good will your implication be, your supplication be? When you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, you become willing to sacrifice and give up everything for the sake of Allah. And the, the, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us Great examples, 
because they were following into the footstep of the Prophet ﷺ, footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ. They followed this role model, the leading example ﷺ, who was willing to give up his life for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the religion. He gave up this, li this life. He was given the choice of becoming a king or a slave to Allah. He chose to be a slave. Umar entered upon him one day and so the trace of the mat that he was lying on, so rough, it left, left marks on his body. So Umar wept, and he said, O Messenger of Allah, you are the Messenger of Allah. Look at the kings of the Persians and the Romans. He said, I prefer to be a slave of Allah. Aisha radiallahu anha used to say, three full moons would pass and we will not light a fire for cooking in the houses of the Prophet sallallahu It was only water and date. He gave up everything for the sake of Allah. The companions followed into his footsteps sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And history, Islamic history is full of such people. Allah Azza wa Jal says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ The true believers are only those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and never doubt. They have no hesitation they are firm in their faith and belief. And they strive, they sacrifice their wealth and their lives for the sake of Allah. They are true believers. Such people are true believers who become willing to give up everything for the sake of Allah. If it pleases Allah. Uh, let me conclude that this, uh, it's already been 50 minutes, and uh, uh, next time, inshallah, we will take the second article or pillar of faith, inshallah, and that will be belief in the angels, inshallah. And with this, I will conclude.